All right, what's going on, WMMA fans? It's Combo Breaker 99. I am back with another video. All right, y'all, looks like a fight that we talked about on this channel before is in the works. It's in the works for UFC London, March 18th, UFC 286. Looks like Jennifer Maya may be taking on Casey O'Neill next. Casey O'Neill. We talked about this fight before on this channel because, as y'all know, Casey O'Neill actually called out Jennifer Maya. She said that was a fight that she would like to take on um, as soon as she can make her comeback. Uh, which, you know, like a lot of us felt, that's the type of fight that she needs. You know, Casey O'Neill is on, what, a 4-0 four, four no win streak right now in the UFC, and she's currently undefeated. And, you know, much like myself and a lot of WMMA fans, we believe that Casey O'Neill really needs to be tested. You know, she's been looking the part of a hungry, doggish, scrappy fighter in there. You know, she likes to take it to the ground. She likes to throw hands. She likes to trade a little bit. But in order to get to the top 10, or eventually become a title contender, you got to step your game up and show more than that, right? You know, she showed the dog, the scrappiness, uh, the ground game, a little bit of everything, you know, the chin. But now we need to see her step it up in IQ. We got to see her step it up in defense. We got to see her step it up in all that dominant factor, especially, right, if she wants to, you know, eventually get to the, the top five or, like I said, challenge for the title because, you know, she believes in her style. And she believes that one day she can go in there and take Valentina's belt. She said that Valentina was keeping the belt warm for her, right? But we'll see about that. Uh, so, yeah, now we uh, have her stepping it up against Jennifer Maya, which to me is definitely going to be the best fight, best name on her resume. Because before, I think a lot of the other fighters, they gave her somewhat of a test, but they folded. They all folded under pressure. So she needs to take, take on somebody like Jennifer Maya that's, you know, challenged the champion been in tough fights, you know, a former Invicta FC champion, you know, that has all the tools as far as, you know, um, technique, you know, studied all the disciplines and, you know, um, has it down, you know, has it down to a certain extent that could definitely be a test for Casey O'Neill. As y'all know, Casey O'Neill, she's been out for, well, by the time she comes back in March, she'll been out a year and some change because her last fight was against um, Roxanne Montefiore in February of 2022, right? Uh, yeah, February 2022. So, yeah, she'll been out for a year and some change. And, um, yeah, like I said before that, you know, she was beating everybody that they were putting in front of her, you know, which not saying is a really big statement because some of these fighters, like I said, they folded under pressure like um, Antonina Shevchenko. Uh, Roxy was probably the one name that I think did the best. But even then, she still came up short, you know. Um, Jennifer Maya, as you all know, Jennifer Maya, she's. She just snapped a two-fight losing streak to Manoa and Caitlin Chikagian with a win over uh, Marina Monroe. And um, that was a fight that I thought Marina Monroe was going to win because Jennifer Maya had me kind of in question about how she shows up. Again, I believe she has these tools, a lot of good tools, you know, the boxing, the physical strength, the jiu-jitsu, all of that. But I always felt like she would just kind of come up short or was kind of unsure of herself. That's what always kind of makes Jennifer Maya kind of questionable in there. You know, that's why she came up short in the Caitlin Chikagian fight and even the Manoa fight. You know, I think she has a lot of great tools, but sometimes just doesn't know how to pull the trigger. I think her and Andrea Lee are very similar. They're very similar. Like they have a lot of tools that could beat. They have a lot of the well-rounded tools about them where they could beat a lot of the flyweights. But, you know, they still come up short. That's why it's always like it's always a head scratch or it's, or it's like always like you're always hitting yourself like, what is wrong with these girls? Like, why is Maya Lee always coming up short when they got the tools? You know, that's what I always have to ask myself. Like they tend to be more well-rounded than a lot of the top 10 girls but or top 15 girls but they still come up short right that's always that's why it's always hard to just put your money or pick on somebody like Maya or Lee and just say okay they got this right but this is one fight I think where class will be in session for Casey O'Neill I think Jennifer Maya look if Jennifer Maya can do what she did against Marina Moreau you know this is one fight where I think she can go in there and teach Casey O'Neill some lessons because that's what Casey O'Neill needs right now. You know, this ain't about Casey O'Neill just going in there and blasting her out doing the same thing, right? No, this is where Casey O'Neill really needs to test her skills out. And Jennifer Maya, it she will be doing that. But Jennifer Maya, first off, you know, she's not going to be like Roxy. You know, she's not going to stand in front of her like Roxy. She's not going to fold like Antonina Shevchenko. You know, she's much stronger than all of them fighters. So, you know, somebody like Maya is going to be moving. You know, she'll be using that lateral movement. And she's going to be using that, um, you know, she's going to be using that left hook, 
she's gonna be using that left hook in this fight. So Casey O'Neill's got to be prepared for that. You know, she said she just can't walk somebody like Jennifer Maya down because she's gonna be, like I said, moving side to side, uh, throwing that one two, finishing off combinations with the left hook. And somebody like Casey O'Neill, that's gonna tell her right then. Look, the first time she gets hit with that pop pop pop, she's gonna have to put them hands up, right? So that's what she needs. She needs to work on that defense. She can't come in with that same Antonina Shevchenko or Roxanne Modafari approach. You can't take my shots all day like that. Then you got to worry about the kickboxing, not just the boxing, but the kickboxing. Whenever Casey O'Neill takes them steps back, might get hit with them head kicks. You see somebody like Manone, who's a better striker than Casey O'Neill, she got caught. Because, you know, I know sometimes Manone will drop her hands. You know, when somebody like Jennifer Maya, she will capitalize on that. And somebody like Casey O'Neill, who doesn't really have defense and will take a bunch of shots, she's going to be open for that head kick, right? So right there, that's the first adjustment she's going to have to make to be successful in a fight with Jennifer Maya is hands up defense, you know, fighting at a better range, not just running straight in there, right? So yeah, this is going to be a big test for her, but it's also going to be somewhat of a test for Jennifer Maya to see if she still got what it takes to compete or still has what it takes to hold down a spot in the top 10, right? Because, you know, she's already lost to, you know, the champ, um, Caitlin Kagan twice, um, Manon. You know, she's coming up short in these fights against, you know, these much um, much more dominant fighters, hungry fighters. So uh, we, I just want to see if she can still hold on to it. You know, will she feel like she can just give up? Will she, will she feel like she's going to give up at this point because she can't get back to the title shot? Or will she refine that fire and just school Casey O'Neill on what she, what she lacks and just says, boom. No, you ain't getting up here. I'm going to stay at the top here. I, I found my flame again, and boom, I'm, I'm going for the belt. You know, that's that's kind of the question with this fight. Um, again, Casey O'Neill, she definitely needs this type of fight, but coming off of a 13-month uh, layoff, by the time she comes back, it's really hard to see her winning this fight. It really is. Like, just off of her – just off of – purely off of her style like it, it really is hard to see her win off of that style because you know i was able to pick it apart in those last few fights and say okay if somebody's sharper on the feet and they they have a little bit more pop to their shots they might hurt this girl right but she is again facing somebody that has the question mark sometimes they don't pull the trigger sometimes they get a little bit predictable like jennifer my can be a little bit predictable with her combination you know they she will throw that same combination that's why i don't understand why marina Moreau didn't figure it out like marina Moreau has some success with her her long jab um but her longer jab but she just didn't capitalize like she didn't time the same combination coming so we'll see if casey o'neill can keep her hands up you know will she avoid big shots okay so i'm gonna be checking her defense in this fight okay Cause that's why I do over here. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be critiquing a fighter. Yeah, I, I do that. <laughs> you know, so Casey and I may be looking at how she does with her defense, and I'm gonna see if she can show that IQ. Like whenever Jennifer Maya starts to do the same thing, if she starts to throw the same combination, will she be able to time it and drop a level and take Jennifer Maya down, keep her, keep her down? We'll see if her ground game is better, right? So I'm gonna be looking at all of that in this fight, and um, yeah, that, that's how we gonna see if she can be ready for top ten. Okay. So, yeah, um, win or lose, though, I don't think it's going to be a bad thing for Casey O'Neill. You know, shout out to Casey O'Neill for wanting to take this tough of a fight off of a year-long layoff or a year-long layoff. You know, I have to give her credit for that. You know, she's always been one to talk to talk to mess, but she also wants to take the tough fight. So she's taking a tough fight. And if she was to come up short, I'm not going to count her out. You know, I'm not de I'm definitely not going to count her out. I'm going to say, OK, that's what she needed. You know, she's still young. Um and it's definitely, like I said, the best name on her resume. It's definitely a step up from everybody else on her resume. So, yeah, that's going to really tell us, okay, uh, what she needs to work on. And if she's able to win, okay, and look like a better fighter, we'll say, yeah, oh, she's she's good to go. She's good to go. It's kind of like Aaron and T Tyler. You know, if Aaron comes up short against Tyler Santos, not like a bad beating, but if she just comes up short like a de split decision loss or something, and definitely not counting her out. She'll be right back. If Casey O'Neill just comes up short, uh, yeah, she'll be right back. If she, even if she gets 30-27, I would understand that because it, it'll prove what I've been telling y'all. It'll prove what I've been telling y'all that, you know, she's not as sharp on the feet as Manon or even as sharp as Aaron or technical as Aaron Blanchfield. Okay? So, yeah, um, I want to see this fight. Definitely want to see this fight. I want to see where Jennifer Maya is at now. Can she do like Angela Hill and keep these other girls from stepping it up? 
We'll see, you know, start handing out some O's and knocking them back down, sending them back to the drawing board. We'll see. Can Casey O'Neill back up that talk off a long layoff? Can she get into the mix with, you know, the Santos, Furos, and Blanchfields, and so on? We'll see, guys. Let me know what y'all think of this fight. Combo Breaker 99. I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.